So Sean has left the boat. morning cup of coffee and talk to you guys. So Sean has left the boat for 12 nights. He has gone on a heavy weather passage with John Crutchmer and a group of other people. Sean flew from Miami to Madrid, Spain, and then from Madrid to, I think it's pronounced Jerez. Hey y'all, just checking in. I'm here at the Miami International Airport, about to hop on a plane and head off to Cadiz, Spain to meet up with world-renowned sailing expert John Kretschmer and join him on a heavy weather training passage from Cadiz, Spain to Tenerife and the Canary Islands. It's going to be an exciting time out in the Atlantic and looking forward to some awesome sailing with John Kretschmer. So I'll keep you guys updated. got there yesterday this morning they got up and started their passage the launch point for the sailing passage with john kretschmer was marina porto sherry a magnificent marina located right in the heart of the bay of cadet seeing john's boat the legendary quetzal for the first time was truly awesome Catal is a beautiful, classic Kaufman 47, an extremely seaworthy boat that has logged many thousand blue water ocean miles. After a brief tour, it was straight down to business, getting everything put away and lashed down. After John and Catal's previous passage across the notorious Bay of Biscay, where they had been hammered. After getting everything aboard squared away, we blasted out of the Bay of Cadet, bound for land. Lanzarote. Sailing on the open ocean is a magical experience. Catal really moves through the water whether sailing under a pulled out Genoa in reefed main or sailing downwind, wing on wing, she really slips through the water and racks up the blue water miles. my mission to stay productive and busy completing much needed tasks on Tellaru. Though our sailboat is a 44 footer, space is still limited. So the more organized we stay, the tidier it feels. I got things together for donation and took an inventory of what we have and where we are keeping it.
even got to experience sailing Quetzal under the Taji Kretschmer designed powerful pink spinnaker sail. Not only is John an expert sailor, professional author, and all around awesome guy, he's also pretty handy in the kitchen. All of our meals aboard Catal certainly didn't disappoint. All right, so we're gonna have pulpa, octopus with garlic potatoes, Spanish style. Sounds amazing. From a one-eyed cook. <laughs> Back on Tellaru, I was faced with the task of getting Delilah on and off the boat by myself while Sean was gone. Delilah weighs about 45 pounds, and with the tide going up and down, lifting her 45 pound self to different heights on the daily turned into quite a task. So I decided to begin having her jump into the dinghy where I could lift her a little bit easier onto the dock. After just a few times, she had it down. Good job, Delilah. So here we are. It is midnight. I am on the midnight to 2 a.m. watch shift. We are on day four out from Porto Sherry in Cadiz, Spain, and we are headed to our first landfall port of call in the Canary Islands, which will be Lanzarote. We are averaging between six and seven knots, and we have a wing-on-wing -wing configuration with a pulled out Genoa on the port side and we have a double reef main to starboard side in the wing-on-wing -wing configuration running pretty much straight downwind. An awesome night of sailing and beautiful clear starry skies. A hell of a time. A hell 
I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. It is a brand new day. Me and Delilah are starting our morning walk. Gosh, it feels really great outside. I actually slept very good last night for the very first time since Sean's been gone. That was night, let's see, night six away from Sean. I woke up so excited because today is the day that I will get a phone call from him at some point. I'll be going to school uh, this morning. I'm walking Delilah, going to grab the car, pull it up here, change into some school clothes. I went ahead and brought this massive bag of laundry because we use a laundry service because we don't have a washer on our boat and living in the marina right now we don't want to be like those people like hanging up our stuff like bucket washing and then hanging up our stuff to dry like on the outside of the boat so that will be a thing that we do once we head out but as of right now we use a laundry service i'm definitely gonna miss it when we leave i think As we spotted land, we made our approach along the coastline of the beautiful island of Lanzarote. Lanzarote is the easternmost island of the Canaries and is believed to be the first of the Canary Islands to be settled. Lanzarote is known for its super clean water and golden sands. After waiting our turn to check in at the reception dock at Marina Rubicon, we got Casal tucked away in a slip right next to an awesome all aluminum Allure's 45.9 blue water sailboat. So I was walking to the car from school and Sean called me and let me know that they landed in Lanzarote. I think that's how he said it. Oh my gosh, it was just so good to hear his voice, but he said that they have a lot of work to do. John Kretschmer is getting them checked in. They've got to get the boat cleaned off, trash taken out, refilled with water, showers, all that jazz. So he said he's learning a lot and that he is going to call me later tonight. So I'm just so happy to have heard from him. I've been missing him so much. Our first night in Lanzarote, we enjoyed the traditional dinner with the captain at Buenos Aires Grill Argentino, where we enjoyed some good food and a few bottles of great Spanish wine. The next day, Nathan and Vivian and their crew aboard Ultima pulled alongside Catal and became our dock mates. During our time in Lanzarote, our crew aboard Catal and the Ultima crew enjoyed some great Captain's Hour cocktail time with John. I don't think you can tell how hard it's raining. It's actually like pouring. And Delilah are on a little morning walk. I'm glad I put a rain jacket on, but I didn't bring an umbrella. So we're just kind of camped out under a tree. It's actually supposed to rain for the next couple days, but we're hoping to get a little window to run back to the boat so that Delilah is not a soaking wet dog on the boat. I just looked at the weather and it says that in the next 10 minutes, it's supposed to get heavier. In 20 minutes, even heavier. 30 minutes, even heavier. We're gonna make a run for it and just get this girl dry when we get back to the boat. can hear me because the rain is so loud you can't even see hardly because the rain is so thick you can see a little bit time in Lanzarote, we cast off the lines and pointed Catal toward Los Palmas in Gran Canaria. As we made our way, the Atlantic was really rocking and rolling. We're on a boat, we're feeling fine, drinking Tennessee whiskey, a big blue sky, we're going up, we're coming down, there's a party on the water, it's a hell of a time, we're on a boat, we're killing time. 
So here we are on our passage from Lanzarote to Gran Canaria, Las Palmas and Gran Canaria. And we are severely reefed with a sliver of Genoa out, trying to slow down to about three knots to time our arrival in the morning and I get there before sunlight. We're on a boat, we're feeling fine. After some great sailing, we made our approach to Gran Canaria, which is the largest of the Canary Islands. The marina was packed, so we picked a spot and set the anchor. And when I say set the anchor, let me tell y'all something. The John Kretschmer method of truly setting an anchor is an invaluable lesson in how to avoid the drag. We then hopped in the dinghy and went ashore to run some errands and even found time to grab a nice cold San Miguel Cerveza. Teleru is where we spend a lot of our time enjoying sunsets, eating, having cocktails, and sailing, and just living. So I decided to give it a good clean. On departure day from Gran Canaria, we watched a gorgeous sunrise as we pulled up the anchor and headed out to our final port in Tenerife. Along the way, we ran into some pretty sporty seas. This gave me the chance to take the helm of Catal and get some valuable practice hand steering, and maintaining course in the wind and waves. Y'all, I truly can't say enough great things about the training passage I experienced with John Kretschmer aboard Catal. Now, it might not be the type of sailing for the crowd that wears cashmere sweaters tied around their neck in their seersucker shorts and loafers holding a fuzzy drink with their pinky stuck out, but if y'all want a nitty gritty awesome true blue water sailing adventure, then you have got to sign on for a passage at John Kretschmer Sailing. landing like right now I'm so excited I'm just waiting on his text to let me know and then I'm gonna go whip around there and pick up my baby Woo! 